start a Rotaract, me. I want to tell you today why you should start a Rotaract club. According to this guy. <laughs> It's a 50-50 chance. <laughs> kind of works anyway, though. So, reason one. Why? Who are you to tell me what I should do? He says, well, I'm, I'm Chris Wells. I'm the DRR, at District 1070, and I'm going to tell you about some of the things that our clubs have been doing. These are all of our clubs now in the district. We've had three new ones. We've got four chartered. Okay, and in no um, particular order, I'm just going to go through some of the stuff that we've done. So Northampton Town, a new, very quick club, very quick club, yeah, very quick club, very new club, growing quickly in members who've recently taken over the maintenance of a roundabout near the Sixfield Stadium from Rotary. We have big plans for a car wash to raise money for a homeless charity, quiz night for different strokes. Already, new club, straight out the gate, doing new things and amazing things. Oh. So let's get the nice animation in. Kettering. Kettering had a big relaunch this year with membership constantly incre uh, increasing. And what they did as their new strategy was they linked up with a local mental health charity, Mind, and made them their nominated charity. So everything they did, their quizzes, their stalls for local events, all raised money directly for that charity, which is amazing. That focus is important because it's... It's giving that do-goodery, which you'll hear a bit more about later, those that haven't heard it before. It's putting forward and putting more good stuff into the world and focusing that in. Northampton Uni were chartered on the 16th of March. Yay! And there they are, you're in the charter. There's Chris Davis there, we're in the, all the fancy ceremony putting over stuff there. I was there, I took that photo, not a humble brag, but um, one of the things that I really liked that I heard there over her, um, by one of the lads there, he said it was really nice being around people with the same values. And that was like a thing that stuck in my head for so long because that beautifully summarizes what Rotary and Rotaract is. It's people with the same good to do good values, do goodery bringing us all together and putting us all in a room. I'm not scared to meet any of you because I know most of you won't kill me because I know that you're out here to do good. Unless you think I'm bad and it's good to kill... Don't kill me. Right. <laughs> the other thing Northampton Uni did this year, the thing they were most proud of, they linked up with a group called the Love You Project, which is rolled out to help women's aid and homeless centres facing hard times across the country. The idea is to collect toiletries and then sort them out into individual bags to give them out to women seeking refuge, which is amazing. Once again, new club already putting more good out into this world. Corby, they've raised over a thousand pounds for the air ambulance at an auction of promises. They helped car parking for a local suffering race, raising funds. I think a suffering race is like a sporty event. It's not like they're just torturing people to a finish line. Um, they also made over 50 carrier bags of care to donate to the Corby Nightlight Shelter. All amazing work. Peterborough. One of the fastest growing clubs we've had. It's absolutely amazing. First meeting ever was on September 2017. Remember that as I go through all of this stuff that they've told me. They helped at a fireworks fiesta in November, which was an event Rotary ran for Peterborough. They did a Zumba event in January, raising over £100, all costs going to a local homeless charity since it, you know, it was the middle of winter. They were chartered on the 2nd of July! Hooray! And there they all are. There's us blending in as well. You know, good, sensible lot there. Um, yeah, not only that, they did a Sue Rider event in April with a, sort of party with a disco charity orchard, raising just under £5,000. They did a duck race which Rotary, uh, with Rotary, which raised um, £888. If you don't know what a duck race is, there's a duck. <laughs> and there's another duck. That's all I know was an amazing event though. And Market Harbour, which is kind of where I'm from and that might have been where I left it last. We, um, Market Harbour, for the longest time, um, I set up this idea of always having something to work towards. So when we first started out, we started doing these quizzes. And this year has been no different. We've had four quizzes. Next quiz, there, is, there are leaflets at our stall. Come and get, you know, if you want to come to our next quiz. Um, these always raise a couple of hundred pounds for um, differently selected charities that we always want to do. But also, it keeps us out in the community. People start knowing who we are. Ah, Road Track, you do those quizzes. You do that charity stuff. You do that goodery. Do goodery. It's like, yeah. Not only that, we had a new president for 2018-2019. Here is a dramatic representation of that election process, because I was the last president. Uh, 
And there's an actual photo of the actual club president, who couldn't be here today because he had this excuse of it's his sister's wedding. <laughs> oh, exactly. Right, yeah. And um, not only that, we've um, been linking up with Different Strokes, which is a thing I think I talked about last year, but basically Different Strokes is a group, um, a support group for young victims of stroke, people of working age, aging anything between like 20 up to 50. And there wasn't a local support group. There were people that are often isolated, you know, maybe because they're disabled or, um, you know, they feel they're not confident to go out or anything like that. And we finally set up our support group. We've actually had people come to our support group. And it's been going really well. We've linked up with the charity now. They've been sending us loads of packs and leaflets and posts. And we're going out. We're trying to get a new venue at the minute. And it's just going absolutely brilliantly. Once again, you have the quizzes. And you have that kind of now set do-goodery. We're raising money. And now we're actually going out and helping specific people. These quizzes, which we've been doing since we formed, in 2015 have actually come back round and really helped us. We ended up being contacted by the Market Harbour Carnival Committee, which uh, Market Harbour Carnival has been this big event for years, thousands of footfall every year. And they actually asked us, they were like, can you help us um, run our Harbour Carnival quiz? And I was like, oh, really? And they were like, yeah, it says we hear your quizzes are the best in town. <laughs> really? Originally, the carnival quiz has been traditionally done by the local radio station. So Market Harbour Rotary has usurped the local radio station, Harbour FM, and now we run the carnival quiz, which was our biggest, most successful quiz. We raised over £150 more than we normally raise, which is insane. Already, we're just constantly moving up. That constant work, that constant do-goodery. Through that as well, we linked with Harbour Carnival um, have a kind of committee and we helped out on the day. We got our own special Rotaract pack. We got to tell people where to go, which is always fun. We hammered things. There's the club president squatting, you know, a big thing that you do there. Um, and there's, there's Jay, um, our friend Jake, who's actually here today, pole dancing, a really important thing to do at these local events here. And we formed a really close bond. We now work with them all the time. We are now on the um, carnival committee. I don't know what award it is, but they've literally, from this carnival this year, it was so successful through this new group and through us that they got nominated for a local award that I don't know what it is, but it's apparently really big. So we'll just pretend it's the Oscars. We got the Oscars for best carnival. Um, but now, you know, there, we, we meet other. These are local business owners. These are local people. Good people that want to put more good out into the community and hadn't heard of things like Rotary and Rotaract before. The other thing that we're doing now with these, which is absolutely amazing, they need more, more volunteers because we're going to make the carnival bigger next year. And we need more volunteers for Rotaract. So now we're combining our forces. We're going to go out using their connections, their local business, their Market Harbour connections, to raise more awareness. So we're always helping each other. Once again, more do-goodery. And then we have this guy, Jake, who's not only our club secretary, but he's now become the national secretary for all of Rotaract across Great Britain. Is that right, Jake? That is correct. Cool. There he is pole dancing. So, you know, there he is. He's got his crown now. And he's a secretary, so there's his laptop, you know. All celebrating that. That's how big this is going now. It's growing. It's getting amazing. That's forgetting the stuff we did as a district together. You know, we had a laser quest day. We met at the district assembly and we went out for a nice meal with Northampton Uni Rotaract. We being Market Harbour Rotaract, sorry. Went out, had an amazing meal with them. This is what's again meeting up with people we wouldn't have necessarily met up with. Meeting people with the same values. We ended up going to Ryla this year and we ran a morning session at Ryla and by the end of that session, every single person that had come signed up and wanted more information about Rotaract. Making us ask, why didn't we do this before? But, absolutely amazing. We did this as well, combined with all the clubs across the district. So once again, it was another nice time to come down, see Graf and Water, which is lovely, and do more goodery. We um, did this thing with WheelMap, which is an app that you basically um, mark places as wheelchair accessible, um, whether they're wheelchair accessible toilets. Um, and we combined it with a pub crawl. <laughs> and just started marking all the places on this pub called Round Market Harbour as to which places are good sized toilets, which place are good um, proper uh, wheelchair ramps. And we learned a ton as well. We learned that some places' idea of a wheelchair ramp is just a curb and then a hill like that, which is ridiculous. But now we're able to put that out, put that across the app. Once again, putting more do-goodery into the world, meeting up with people of the same values. 
Also, this was so successful, we're now doing this across other Rotaract clubs. So we've done this in Market Harbour, we're going to do it at Peterborough soon, and we need more clubs so we can do more pub crawls around other places. So, you know. Um, number two. Why? We did it all before. Now, I know there's some older, moodier Rotarians and people that are like, we did it before. <laughs> I remember back in the day, we had some, we wore some funny clothes, we had some funny things, we did some goodery, it was really successful, we raised lots of money, it was fantastic and brilliant, and then all of a sudden, the Berlin Wall came down, such a good wall, came down, and then it all fell apart, and then Rotorap became nothing, so why do it again? And I say to those people, it may have happened before, but <laughs> just because it faltered before doesn't mean it will again. But why? And I say to you, it's now 2018, year of the smart year, the time of the smartphone, expressive art, social media and bake-off. What a time to be alive now. What a time we can put more do-goodery out into this world. And we can connect up and be more linked in more to put more stuff out. We've got the knowledge now. That's right, lady. We've got the knowledge from all of our past mistakes, from all of the past things that we had. We now have our ambassadors. And the ambassadors are an amazing thing because they link us across to these studies that I had here. Millennials are actually working hard, let's research. Snowflake millennials are actually working hard for their parents or less. This was me justifying by saying I'm busy and I just wanted to find some evidence to put across that. The short answer to all the above from all that, this was from one of these articles, is that millennials picked a terrible era to enter the workforce with lower employment rates, stagnant earnings, and difficulty in job hunting, meaning that this age um, group has been hit hardest by the UK's lost decade. A lot of people that I know work from like 7 a.m. all the way across to 7 p.m. Not a lot of time for do-goodery, not a lot of time to arrange these big events. But you know who does? No offense. Some Rotarians. Some Rotarians through these ambassadors, we can now work together and put even more do-goodery into the world. Taking advantage of the fact that we have less time, they have more time, going out and putting more good into the world, like this visual Metaphor here, we have the ambassador do-gooders. <laughs> Rotary can hold us and guide us, and then we quickly are eating our cereal and going out and doing more things. <laughs> and yeah, it's far from perfect. <laughs> I was quite proud of that joke, not gonna lie. Yeah, it's not perfect. Here's a picture of me just last week when I was trying to gather photos. <laughs> for what the district had been up to. I don't know whether anyone noticed, but I didn't get any photos from Corby, so I had to improvise. And put, that was why the trouser press was there, for anyone that noticed that. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. Look how much I've aged as well. Look at this beard. That was how much stress I had from email. and go, just tell me what's going on. But it doesn't matter, because I'm here today. We've got all this stuff. Let's not forget as well, just a couple of years ago, these were the leaflets that we had, were given out trying to advertise Rotaract when numbers were low, well, nobody wants to sign up to it, when I discovered in my detective work that these people at the bottom of this programme are actually part of onlineexammarker.com. <laughs> and then on this poster, that's going out advertising, yeah, join Rotaract, an organisation for people aged 18 to 30. All of a sudden I noticed this guy's Jonathan Martin graduating on 2020. How old is that guy? These posters have been around for a good five, six years. And that's the thing, isn't it? Rotary and Rotaract is such a difficult thing to explain to someone who has no idea what it is, to the point where it does sound a bit culty if they don't know what it is. It's just like, yeah, we meet up and we, we do things and good for the world. And it's like, what? And that's why I say do goodery, because we're putting more good out into the world. It's such a nice, easy summary of what we do. It's getting closer to perfect now. <laughs> This was another slide that I had from 2015, okay? This was one of the first conferences that I did, talked about how it was in 2015. Three active clubs, occasional visits, no solid structure. Now let's talk about 2018. Five extremely active growing clubs. We have constant Rotarian support for our ambassadors now, and we have a new sexy structure. 
to allow that kind of oversight and so we can all keep an eye on each other and keep putting more good out into the world. Look at what happened in one year. Three new clubs, thousands raised for charities. All of this stuff. A lot, some of this stuff as well, we couldn't have done. In fact, most of this stuff we couldn't have done without Rotarian support. Either giving us opportunities, linking us up with people, allowing us to just do more goodery. And we know, we all know people. There were people at Ryla every year, and like I said, they never would normally go on into Rotaract. But these are people who want to do charitable things, want to put more good into this world, but then they don't know how. That's why we need more Rotaract clubs. That's what we need to do. We have new sexy leaflets now with real people on. And we have this poster that um, I helped make, which is one of the proudest things that I have done because this perfectly summarizes what Rotaract is to me and what Rotaract is to mo should be to all of you, to Rotary as well. You're meeting excellent, magnificent, wonderful, glorious people. You're doing supreme, outstanding, dazzling, remarkable things. That's it. That's all you're doing. We're meeting up. We're doing amazing things. Here it is out in the wild with Abby for Peterborough Rotaract. She sent me a photo, so I felt it was important to put that out. But also, we have tote bags, do goodery, as I said, which are free with a two pound donation. <laughs> with a mysterious donation. I'm, I'm feel, this was last year, so I feel nicer this year. Donate what you like. All the money is going back towards this kind of do goodery. This is how much we believe in it. We printed it on tote bags. You know, if it's on a tote bag, that's serious now. It's law. It may have happened before, but that doesn't mean it wasn't worth it. So um, on one of these photos, I was able to get in contact with this dude here, Mr. Andy Gilbert, who used to be in Rotary. I know a, couple, a lot of you um, remembered him, actually, I was talking to about before. And I've luckily, hopefully, using the magic of technology, should be able to link up with him. Yeah, it's good. We're having fun, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's Did good. Did they like the joke about the penguin? I haven't said that bit yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. Um, oh, by the way, have you ever realised this is fake yet? And that uh, we're actually in my office. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> right, now we're in HD. I was in Rotaract for 11 years, from the age of 18 to 29. A uh, fabulous time in my life. I got up to loads of stuff. Um, uh, what I really enjoyed was the, the fundraising side of things. This was in the days where the first comic relief was there, uh, the first telethon. Uh, I formed a, a band and uh, raised money for Polio Plus. Um, it, it was just an amazing time in my life. Some of the proudest moments in my road track career was in 1987, hosting the multi-district conference in our district, 1070, uh, for 600 people, and I was a sergeant at arms on stage. Two years later, I was the district chairman, and the following year, 1990, I was the national chairman. And these were in times where road track was really booming, 15 to 20,000 members uh, in RIBI. I spent some of the best years in my life in Rotaract. And at that age, you know, I, I, was, on a, I was on a personal development program. You know, I was learning management skills, project management, how to run team meetings, fundraising, budgeting, finance skills. I would honestly say that it was the best development program that I've been on, and it lasted 10 years. I think there were two reasons why I didn't join Rotary. One of them was uh, my career at 29. I really needed to focus on that. And there was an attendance rule where you had to attend a certain number of meetings um, and I didn't believe that I would be able to do that. I think the best piece of advice I would give about expanding Rotaract is when asked what is Rotaract, I say it's actually anything that you want it to be. There's a group of people that you can have fun with socially, organise some amazing events, whether that be for fundraising or community. It really gives you a, a licence to have a brilliant life. Oh, that's good. That's perfect. I might have. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited. Also, just in case you wondered, that is Andy there in that photo. I enjoyed that. But yeah, a license to have a brilliant life. 
What another beautiful idea behind what Rotary and Rotaract is. And it's one of those things where it's like, why isn't this going out more? This is what we need to do now. This is what we need to bring across. Part three. Why? Are you here? I like to think that we're all here for the same thing, for do-goodery, to do good. And so much so we printed it on the tote bags. And Northampton now got it on their shirts. Yes. Yeah, thank you. That was good. <laughs> we're putting more do-goodery, um, do putting more good out into the world. But let's, let's think about this a bit more. Here's some other articles that I found up recently. Loneliness linked to major life setbacks. Young, successful, busy, and yet lonely. A generation empowered by the internet and plagued by loneliness. It's constantly going on. People constantly talking about how young people, often they'll either finish university or they'll come out of university early. I heard this from a couple of people from Ryler, actually. They'll come back and people have either moved away or they've left uni early and their group of friends have gone. And there are people that are just like, they feel like they're connected. We feel like we're connected. We can talk to them on the phone. But then there's none of that face-to-face -face contact, which is fine for a while if people smell. But like also, I think it's important to kind of create these scenarios where people who maybe have moved to a new town or on their own, don't know anyone, have opportunities to make new friends, to meet people with the same values. Because a lot of people want to be like the most popular penguin. And you know why he's the most popular penguin? Because he's an ice guy. Well, we have the ambassador do-gooders, you know, which allow and set up, us up our scenarios, but we also work together. <laughs> I know some people have said this before. There are some rotary clubs just through, you know, through circumstance, aren't necessarily as mobile as they used to be, aren't necessarily have as much energy as they used to be. If only there was some kind of youthful source that we can morally mine to allow to put more good, to do more goodery out into the world. And what a perfect thing Rotaract is. And it allows us to become more than the sum of our parts as well. Working together, doing amazing things. Doing stuff like this. And also, it's in your remit. It's in your challenge, Barry Rassin. He said at the same time to set a goal to double the number of Rotaract clubs during the 2018 to 2019 year. So you've been asked to do it by the boss man. We saw him in a video, so he's even more important. That's one above a tote bag. <laughs> and um, if I go up the district map now, we look at 1070. I'm, oh, what's, what's wrong, Jerry? Oh, Jerry's getting sad. Do you know why? Because up north, there's all this potential, all this lost potential up north. A lot of our clubs are very southern at the minute, so I think you northerners, we need northern of the district, need to kind of build it up now. We need to expand. I want to come up here again next year, hopefully, if you ask me back, um, and panic over the fact that I now have 10 Rotaract clubs to talk about all the stuff we've done this year. Imagine that. Imagine the amount of do-good we're putting out into the world. We've raised thousands this year. Imagine what we can do next year. I want to um, just kind of um, talk about this one bit now. Also, this was taken during a rehearsal. It wasn't that bad last year. <laughs> Um, but some of you may remember that I did a talk last year up in Wales um, in September of 2017. And after I did that talk, I was doing this talk, I was running about like I was doing now. I've tried to do a little less to keep in the light, but it was running around like I did before. And um, I finished it and I walked off stage and I burst into tears and I cried for about 10 minutes because I was exhausted. Because in September of 2017, within one week, um, the person I lived with didn't want to live with me anymore. I had to move out. I moved in with my grandparents, and I started a new job, all within four days. I started working this job um, at a school, and they told me they'd support me and train me, and there wasn't as much there as I thought there was, and it was a hard school, and it was extremely difficult, and... I was really struggling, really struggling with all the emotional stuff like that. I was living with my grandparents. I had two weeks to write my presentation for Rotary. 
A lot of people there. Not only that, my grandparents' house, this is a 100% true story, um, my computer kept blowing out the power at my grandparents' house. So when I was writing the presentation last year, it was like doing it during the Blitz. I was doing it. I was like, and this is my... Pre <laughs> ah! I'm now instinctively able to save really fast. But yeah, so all of that emotional strain, I was, it was really hard. And I was really struggling, so much so that in November of 2017, I got really, 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 really ill. I caught like four infections and the flu in my kidneys, and my lungs. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I got signed off work, but because of the way that work was run, I still had to plan lessons. And I still had to write lessons to things I'd never taught before, but I still needed to do it. And I was struggling. It was really hard. And then in January of 2018, I returned to work. And it was just even harder, and I couldn't do it. And nothing's worse than working a job that's so intense. I was literally there from 7 p.m. Sorry, 7 p.m.? No. <laughs> Late school. No, I was literally there from 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m. to at least 7 p.m. every day, minimum. And working a day on the weekend. If I dared not work a day on the weekend. Anyone who's a teacher knows this as well, and they're far more resilient than I. Just... You know, this isn't a struggle. This is just the reality of it. But I couldn't deal with it with everything else. And the other problem is with schools, you have to um, hand in your notice a whole term ahead of time. So that's two to three months notice. How many jobs are that? And all of a sudden, I felt like I was drowning. I was really struggling. And I was literally crying on my way home every day. And it, I, I couldn't deal with it anymore. So I just handed in my notice. And I, I, I didn't want to mess with the school about because I love the school and I love the kids, but I couldn't deal with it anymore. So I handed in my notice in January to leave in April, but then all of a sudden I've quit a job, I've just got a new flat, what am I going to do? And luckily there were some amazing Rotarians um, out there who's out there today who was talking to people they knew, and one of them was this guy, Alan Jukes, who is also that guy in the photo. <laughs> And he knew Andy Gilbert, who rang me up on the phone. And I went for an interview with him. And he supported me and helped me. And on April 2018, I started working on his farm. On his farm, he's not a farmer. He's a business consultant. But you know, it looks nice. It's a nice place to work. And there's a cat. And all of a sudden, I was working a job I liked again. And I was working with people who were amazing, who had similar values, working together. And that's the amazing power of Rotaract. I went within the course of one year, much like how those clubs have just come out of nowhere and put more good into the world, it's had a specific effect on my life. And that's just on me. That's just my personal story. Let's not forget all of these charities that now have hundreds, two thousands of pounds raised for them just over the course of a year. So in answer to the question why you should start a Rotaract club, I say to you, why not? Thank you very much.